Welcome to Burning Bright, a weekly podcast presenting poetry and prose from Passager. This episode celebrates Juneteenth, a holiday commemorating the emancipation of slaves in this country. Passager's second issue back in 1990 featured a discussion among three storytellers. One of them, Mary Carter Smith, performed her stories in hospitals, schools, libraries, and prisons around the world. She was a griot, part of a tradition of oral history and storytellers from West Africa. Here's some of what she said in that issue. One time, I was in a high school gymnasium where they had never had an assembly. When we sang Lift Every Voice and Sing, which is the black national anthem, the kids were boogieing. I said, I'm here, and you don't have to listen to me, for God did not make you puppets, but I share something that is important. Stories carry so much of what we need to know, our laughter, our mores, our folkways, our ideals. We can fight the battles with these stories. In Africa and the Caribbean, we sing the same songs again and again. Every family has a griot, somebody who remembers the birthdays, the recipes, the nicknames, and somebody to carry on each tradition. People don't value tradition and will look down and be ashamed of what happened. They don't want to bring the skeletons out. But somebody needs to put it down so that we will know who we are. For example, my great-grandmother had a feather mattress. That was a big deal, you know. To have a feather mattress was it. When her children left home, she took some feathers from her mattress and some from her new mattress and gave them to her daughter. My grandmother gave my mother some of those feathers, plus new feathers. And there was a feather mattress passed down. So I've had it here on the bed for years. What's going to happen after me? I have no children to whom to leave it. I'm the last of the line. So I decided I'm going to take some of those feathers out and put them in a plastic bag and tie it with red, black, and green ribbon for the liberation colors and give it to the people in the family that are left and anybody else who wants them. Mary Carter Smith in Passager's second issue, talking about the importance of storytellers. Lucille Clifton was a former Maryland Poet Laureate, author of over 30 poetry and children's books, and a two-time finalist for the Pulitzer Prize in Poetry. In Passager's first issue back in 1990, she talked some about her life. She said she started college at Howard University in Washington, D.C., but lost her scholarship and transferred to Fredonia State Teachers College near Buffalo, New York, quote, for three of the worst months of my life. They had never seen black people. There must have been only four of us. When we walked down the street together, people just stared from their cars. I was put into remedial English. At Howard, I was in the top 98th percentile, but when I got to Fredonia, I was put into remedial English as a matter of course. I didn't take a placement test. I wrote a paper, and when I got it back, they told me I got a poor mark because I was trying to be original. Even Shakespeare copied, they said. What did I mean, trying to be original? And now you know, I'm the full professor who is tenured, who is not a college graduate. An excerpt from an interview with Lucille Clifton from Passager's first issue. Larnell Custis Butler sat in the park near her house, drew pictures of the people she saw using a sharpened stick she dipped in ink, and then wrote poems about the lives she imagined for them. Here's a poem she wrote about herself to my black female ancestors who endured slavery in America. I have seen some sepia-colored photographs of black women, dark as mahogany wood, and delicately sweet-looking as purple morning-vined flowers. Names, relatives of mine from early days in America, stared back at me from photographs kept in a wooden box carved with symbols I have never seen. I have touched the cracked veins of lines that have cut their presence across the surfaces of family photographs. With my finger, I have traced each line and wondered to myself whose fingers have kissed an eye or touched a shoulder as I have. Sepia-looking photographs of colored slave women do not tell of generational curses some of my female ancestors were burdened with from birth to death. 
I have a determination to carry the dignity I see in the faces of my female ancestors. The curse will stop at me. Larnell Custis Butler's poem to my black female ancestors who endured slavery in America from her book Improvise in the Amen Corner. To buy Improvise in the Amen Corner, subscribe to or learn more about Passager and its commitment to writers over 50, go to PassagerBooks.com. You can download Burning Bright from Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, and various other podcast apps. It's been 245 years since all men were created equal, and 158 years since the United States outlawed slavery. And yet, we still have a long way to go. For Kendra, Mary, Christine, Roseanne, and the rest of the Passenger staff, I'm John Shore.